As you all know now, I'm Janae Van Wolfton Poulter, and I am a professional sessional. I came very, very late to teaching. In fact, I've only been teaching since 2013. Prior to that, I had, I hate to admit, slightly over two decades experience in business. I was marketing manager for Adidas and I introduced Torsion. I also was involved in transforming the marketing and getting companies in receivership sold for what's now known as PricewaterhouseCoopers and um, Westpac Properties. After that, I sort of got stuck in hotels and I was director of marketing and sales for Grand Hyatt Melbourne and also the same for a 1,000-roomed five-star hotel in Jakarta. I had what I call my whiteboard change when I was contacted by Cambridge International College who asked me to come on board and be a lecturer. Wow, it was very different, but it was one of the best things and best decisions that I've made in my life, obviously aside from my daughter. The Director of Higher Education recommended about two years ago that I undertake the Graduate Certificate in Learning and Teaching, and I am so glad that I did. My teaching and my passion for teaching has increased so much since I've been exposed to the four units, which I undertook in 18 months. I was asked by Cambridge International College in 2014 to transform the services marketing unit into a digital form, which I did. And that was one that was of particular interest to me, of course, because of my background um, in hotels. I undertook the two digital units first at Swinburne, and they, in fact, fed into a lot of the changes I made in the curriculum design and assessment unit, which I completed semester one, 2016. Even though I had already redeveloped the digital unit for um, Cambridge International College, having undertaken those two Swinburne units, I redesigned the entire course. I introduced eativities, and yes, that is me, morphed with Shrek. I introduced more engaging, more enticing activities on a module by module basis. Also videoed introductions to every single module because the feedback from my 2015 students is they didn't just want to see me in the first week's introduction. They wanted to see me every week provide an overview. And my own personal experiences at Swinburne made me realise too, it's important to be able to see your e-moderator and interact with them. So the feedback I had from the unit was big tick. Students really enjoyed it and there was very positive student feedback in the surveys. One thing that the Learning Transformation Unit excels in is providing us with the skills to be reflective practitioners. So in looking back over the revised services unit, I've realised two key points. In following and applying Salmon's five-stage model, first couple of weeks, students were highly engaged. They wanted to know, what do we need to do? in this services marketing module. What are the assignments? Where are the activities? Which ones are graded? So high level of participation. A little bit like the X axis in Julie Salmon's model. As we progress, they then start asking the question, oh, this participation, is it assessed? And the answer was no. So by the middle of the semester, and certainly towards the end when other assignments for other units were due, participation dropped off. Now another key issue that I reflected upon was collaboration was highest among students who I knew, those that had been in my face-to-face -face lectures. So it was these two reflections that I took into the curriculum design and assessment unit. Now one of the assessment tasks we had to do was mapping the external and the internal relationships. Now mapping the external relationships was really easy because the Director of Higher Education at Cambridge International College had each of us lecturers involved in reviewing the unit at the start of the year. We'd gone through the AQF Level 7 requirements. 
We've been mapping and we actually changed the intended learning outcomes for the units. So that was easy. But when it came to the internal mapping, I realised I had to make a lot of improvements. I needed to introduce more relevant and authentic assessment. I needed to assess participation. I then introduced, and I think the type's a little bit too small to see, the Services in Action um, TLA. On a weekly basis in tutorials, students were going to be required to report on the, uh, and apply the theory of that week to one service company of their own selection. Now this was to be graded. So they had to participate, they had to participate and provide on a Trello board feedback on other people's selected company. Now this conversation that would occur in Trello would then feed into the written and the oral presentation and peer review. So I was terribly excited about the fact that I was able to introduce, once again, participation and get students focused on the bigger picture with applying theory on a weekly basis. I sat down with my discipline head and the um, director of higher education and the response was fantastic, yes, go introduce it. Unfortunately, once the director of higher education walked out, my discipline head said, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. I don't want to introduce a new assessment task. You can make a few minor adjustments to the current assessment. And that was what I did. I introduced participation. It wasn't the 10% I wanted. It was only the 3%. And also one mark for self-reflection into the written um, assessment. Still did the Trello board because it wasn't assessed. Participation level hasn't been as what I would have um, hoped. This unit is currently still being um, delivered, so I don't have any information with respect to success rates, etc. But I was beginning to get the um, impression that I was able to change turning and leech and uh, turning and leeching. Yeah, turning and leeching. That's what I do. Teaching and learning activities. However, if I was wanting to change and add new assessment, I was getting a big roadblock. Now, another one of the units that I'm highly passionate about is integrated marketing communications, for which we use the acronym IMC. I spent a year as an account manager in an advertising agency. And what I wanted to do was to bring this experience and merge this with all of the theory and the concepts which I learnt in the curriculum design and assessment unit. Now the first assessment that we had in the Swinburne unit was taking apart ILOs. Now I didn't use an existing unit. I started from scratch because I wanted to involve the practicum of what is required out there in industry. I developed these five new intended learning outcomes, and it even included one of Bloom's um, psychomotor, the display, which is quite unusual in intended learning outcomes. Of course, made sure that the intended learning outcomes scaffolded all down through constructive alignment to proposed assessment and also the teaching and learning um, activities. The second main assessment which we undertook in the curriculum design and assessment unit was developing, as you can see here, an actual uh, presentation where we defined what assessment required to be changed, why it needed an improvement, and we went and we developed new assessment. Now, I decided to introduce two new assessments. What I wanted to do was provide students with practical experience to go out into industry and explore and apply all of the theory which they learn on a weekly basis in the Integrated Marketing Communications Unit. 
students were required for the first task to develop an advertising brief. They were to go out to a small medium organisation, either of their own choice, or I would select one for them, and physically take a brief from the manager. Now, with that brief, they were then to apply 12 general industry guidelines and develop a creative brief which an advertising agency would um, be normally given. Now, within this, there was peer review of their drafts. This accounted for 20% of final mark. The second assessment task related to taking the outcome of that first assessment and developing the campaign themselves. Now, a feature of the first assessment was that 5% of grade was feedback from the small, medium enterprise itself. So they were to take that feedback, they were to take the feedback from myself and then develop an actual campaign. This was to be 35% of mark, of which 15% was an oral presentation and 5% was to be um, peer review. Once again, cascading back to the new intended learning outcomes. I was very excited about this. I put a formal proposal to the department head and also the dis discipline head. We sat down and we had a meeting. The department head was enthusiastic. She said, I'll leave you with the discipline head to work out implementation. The discipline head, as soon as she left the room, said, we're not doing any of it. Another roadblock. New ILO, new, introducing new ILOs, roadblocks. Introducing new assessment, roadblock. However, I was able to revise the existing assessment to focus on a small to medium-sized organisation. I was also able to introduce new teaching and learning into the tutorials where each student had to follow on a weekly basis a large company and report on the IMC. Now, I did give a subtle little hint to those that weren't doing it after week three that they might be a little bit disappointed in the final exam. What I did is cascade those tutorial activities into a question on the final exam paper. I also cascaded a question relating to their assessment task. So almost 30% of their final exam paper focused on performance-related tasks which they'd done either in their assignment or they'd undertaken in tutorial activities. The result? there was a 20% increase in the pass rate for those students who had undertaken the final exam. Now, I was the same lecturer in 2015 and 2016, so the only real difference was the change to the um, curriculum. Once again, not able to introduce new ILOs, not able to introduce the assessment task where students would have been able to go out and get actual industry experience face to face. I was, however, able to deliver a little bit of um, differing teaching and learning. Now, this just doesn't occur in institutions where I'm currently lecturing. This is an ongoing theme. I'm seeking new sessional opportunities, and I will send out responses to job ads. I will go to interviews. I will show them some of the teaching and learning activities I undertake in class like the segmentation game, where I give the students a pack of cards and they have to segment their target markets according to three different products. We undertake, and I did it yesterday in a tutorial, the near beer game, where students have to match supply and demand. And they find out it's actually really, really difficult, even when demand can be relatively um, stable. From the top, to the not-so-top higher education institutions, I get asked one question. Well, what is your research interest? And how many published research papers have you had in the past year? I do, however, have a little bit of solace, and that is in the Grattan Institute's report entitled Taking University Teaching Seriously. 
And I do realise that this was also discussed um, yesterday. I have found very much that a lot of the discipline heads are very research-based. Um, the department heads, not so. Department heads tend to be more accepting. Department heads want to introduce new assessment, introduce, yes, those new ILOs are fantastic, let's get it done. But it is the actual discipline head that's saying the roadblock, no. I had an interesting experience just this last week. One of my colleagues at Cambridge International College was speaking to one of their colleagues at another institution, which is in that top 10 list. And they were complaining about the fact that they're having an issue with student engagement. Our lecturers, who all had PhDs, are not responding to students' inquiries within acceptable time. Students are complaining. Our lecturers are only providing a grade mark. And my colleague said, well, you should speak to Janae. You should see what, what we do here. And I had an interview yesterday morning, and they were asking me questions such as, what do you do when you grade an assessment? And I said, well, I'll turn it in. I use the grade marks with the general comments. I also use a general overall comment. And when it works, I record a voice comment. They went, oh, wow. Where did you learn to do all of that? And I said, well, I undertook the graduate certificate in learning and teaching higher education at Swinburne. And that is standard. I'd like to thank the Learning Transformation team and especially Dr. Gary Williams of the Curriculum uh, Design and Assessment Unit for providing me with the tools, the knowledge that has enabled me to ignite my passion even further for lecturing in higher education. Thank you. Really interesting hearing that about that. That's really transforming learning, which I think is just fantastic. So thanks very much. Have we got any questions for Jim? Jim. So is the moral of your story that all discipline heads need to have taken undertaken a graduate certificate in teaching and learning? Well, it's actually surprising to me when I saw the figures in the Grattan report as to the amount of um, higher education personnel who have undertaken any type of teaching qualification. And what I was absolutely gobsmacked that I think it was 64% of those that teach would much prefer to do research. And this is what people like myself who just want to teach. To be quite honest, I'm going to probably have to do a PhD to keep myself relevant as a sessional lecturer. I don't want to be, I don't want a career. I don't, all I want is to be in front of students as a sessional. That's where my absolute passion is. But it's getting to the stage I'm going to have to need to do a PhD to do that. And all I want to do is teach. Do it in education. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> any, any, other, any other questions? Why do you think it is that the discipline heads are so reluctant and um, how do you think they feel when you challenge them on the TLAs and all that kind of stuff? Some of the interviews that I've had with, let's say, a, a very, very top one, they really don't care. It's like our university is founded on research and that's what I have to look at as our number one priority. And I sit there, and, I, and you can't argue against a discipline head anyhow, but it's actually surprising that one of the discipline heads, which was the topic of this conversation, has since moved on, because even though he was in a 50-50 research teaching role, he's chosen and he's found another role where he doesn't have to do as much teaching. And that's what we're constantly fighting. You know, those that really just want to research aren't interested in new ILOs because it means they're going to have to spend a lot more time going through the whole approval process when they could be researching. Thank you. I really like the complexity you went into around your assessment frame and also the challenges that you face. So I understand that you were, you know, doing tweaks and small changes. So if I can just ask you a granular question around that. You had a very small amount of um, uh, marks for participation, and was it a 1% uh, 
It was one, well, and I honestly, Liz, I think I snuck that through and the discipline head didn't see it. Yeah. I just, I didn't say, I'm going to put participation there. I just said, oh, I've, I've changed the focus of the assignment and it went through. I would have liked 10% participation. So did you find that those small percentages made a difference? That unit hasn't run through yeah, its whole... Just anecdotally, as you I, Look, I it. think it will, mm -hmm. because students are very assessment-focused. Yes. You know, they will turn up to a tutorial if something is going on that's going to affect their final grade. Mm. So I believe that, yes, participation being graded will definitely increase not only the pass rates, but also engagement, participation, etc. But it does need to be higher. It's, Three yeah. percent, I'll be really interested to see whether they believe that is enough to, um, you know, to put in the effort. Uh, I think that's a really good point, actually. Is, but, you know, as you well know, students are very strategic about what they put their energy into and it is, it is geared around getting the best, you know, result that they Ab can Absolutely, from that. So the least guess, effort. <laughs> yeah, with the least effort. Yeah. And um, I think that's really important around a, a small figure like that is some students might go, it's not worth my while. So be interested to hear back on how that part of it works out. My gut really. feel is it's not going to be a high level. Yeah. From what I've seen so far. But at least you've put you've put three percent in, you might be able to get it to exactly. ten next time. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Joe.